You're watching the Maryland Fan Show on Fan Media Network. Uh, I am uh, Alex Murphy, your co-host, and just with me as always will be my other co-host, Logan Hill. Logan, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, how are you doing, Alex? Doing pretty well. Uh, so today we have a few things to discuss with you guys, first of which being, for those that didn't see, uh, Maryland men's basketball played number 17 Minnesota at Minnesota yesterday. So yesterday being Saturday, they won 63-49. couple good performances out of the Tarps individually. Logan, from what you saw, how did you feel about the game? So... The story with Maryland basketball this year, of course, all the questions with Jalen Smith going into the NBA and Anthony Cowan moving on as well, is who was going to step up? Who was going to be the guy? The thing with Maryland basketball this year is that they don't have a consistent guy that is the guy. In mm-hmm. Against the Minnesota, it was Eric Ayala. He had a great game. When he's shooting from outside and hitting his three-pointers, you can kind of tell that he's going to have a good day. And that's exactly what he did. He carried himself and had a composed junior looking performance mm-hmm. and another thing that i wanted to ask is how frustrating can it be to watch this team sometimes because they have shown glimpses of greatness but they're also extremely inconsistent exactly that's frustrating is a great way to put it actually i um i did a game on the radio back on it was on new year's eve and they were playing michigan a rank, another ranked team mm-hmm. big time full of ranked opponents this year for maryland of course they in the first half of the game and like deep into the first part of the second half they were playing great they were playing like they could hang with michigan and then it just fell apart they didn't they weren't scoring their defense was lacking and now that i brought up the defense that's another thing i wanted to highlight from the minnesota game was their defense was swarming in that game and i think that's a big part of the reason that they were able to get a lead and hold on to the lead when it got tougher down the stretch too yeah, I'm with you on both of those points. It's 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 extremely frustrating to watch this team, and it sucks because I mean, obviously, this team is a good team, a good all around team, all around team. There are a lot of good players that are comprised within this team, but it's just frustrating because without Cowan, without Sticks, without all of the bigs that they lost due to transfers or and guys graduating and leaving, it's just they need. They just need a better presence inside. I think that's their biggest thing right now is is they don't have that good inside presence. And you can really see it. There's a lot of vulnerability that they show. I mean, they played really, really well against Minnesota, so credit to them for the win. And this is their third, um, actually, this is a program record, their third top 20 road win. So that that is very, very impressive. But there is still a lot that they need to fix before the end of the season. Yeah, for sure. And you you made a couple of good points. You talked about their their post presence and their inside their inside game. One thing that I think actually worked really well against Minnesota was they went to some five out sets and kind of spread Minnesota out, took advantage of getting the the bigger guys from Minnesota on the perimeter and they hit their shots. When you hmm. when you can hit your outside shots, you can survive that way. I mean, you've seen it in the NBA with the way the NBA has changed, but not so much in college where there's still traditional big man and post play stuff like that. That would be great. And they have their great performances, but then they also have the performances that make you scratch your head and wonder why. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with the rest of this team moving forward this season because there, there there are still a lot of games for this team to play. The one, the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this first episode was uh, the performances of a few Terps that are currently playing in the NFL that played in their respective NFC and AFC championship games. Those players being Darnell Savage Jr., who is a cornerback slash safety slash secondary player on the Green Bay Packers, and then wide receiver Stefan Diggs, who is um, arguably the best receiver in the NFL uh, this season playing for the Buffalo Bills. Diggs had six receptions for 77 yards and a 38-24 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. And Savage put some pressure on on Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady in their game. Uh, and But unfortunately, uh, the Packers ended up with a, I believe it was a 31-26 win, if I'm not mistaken, so. in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, uh, Logan, in terms of the guys that the Terps currently have in the NFL, based on the performances that they've um, shown off this season, especially with Stefan Diggs, where's the ceiling at right now for Maryland when it comes to continuing to produce more guys uh, that will eventually go pro? That's a great question. It's funny. It's funny you asked that because I was talking about it on a, on a different podcast earlier this week is that's it's starting to become not a surprise, but the norm. Like yeah. Stefan Diggs was 
far and away the best receiver in the NFL this year. He, I'm pretty sure he led in catches. He may have also led in yards. I think it was catches and yards. Yeah, catches, yards, I think possibly targets. I don't know about ca you know catching percentage, but yeah, exactly. definitely and, a bunch of those. And in his first season coming over from Minnesota, I mean, he was a fifth round pick back in, I believe it was either 2015 or 2016. It was 2015, 2015, fifth 20, round pick. 2015, so regardless, I mean, you've seen him and now you've seen guys like DJ Moore also have great seasons. And then in the secondary, you've seen guys like Darnell Savage and even JC Jackson, who plays for the Patriots. So I think and I think the biggest thing now is you're seeing Maryland recruit like better with Loxley at the helm. Mm. I think if things continue to trend the way that they're trending, you can see Maryland have guys that go into the NFL and be longtime starters, be star players be standout guys so hopefully it's only up from here and this isn't the ceiling yeah i completely agree with you on that maryland has a lot of guys right now um there I, I feel like there's like a core of guys that have all kind of come out within the last few years that have become really really good and maryland starting to consistently produce players and even in this year's draft i mean i know antoine brooks jr went undrafted and probably should be on a team at some point but also anthony mcfarland um, they have they have a lot of guys that are coming up all kind of at the same time within these last few years, and it's really really exciting to see what um, will continue to manifest of them as it um, as as their careers go forward from what we see as fans. For sure, and just another guy. I mean, you talked about McFarland and Antoine Brooks. Ty Johnson was a guy that got an opportunity this year. He got, I believe, it was either traded or he was let go by Detroit and ended up with the New York Jets. And by the end of the season, he was one of their go-to running backs and he had a yep. couple big games. So it's just, it's exciting to see the guys that you covered, the guys that you watched in college, go on to the NFL and do good things, do big things. They're not coming from Alabama. They're not coming from an Ohio State. They're coming from Maryland and they're producing yeah. in the National Football League. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Well, uh, that's our show. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, simply create a profile on Fan Media's iOS app or website. Select your teams and make a short intro video on your phone. Show hosts, reporters, former players, and super fans can use our Get Verified feature and make an intro video as well. And our mobile newsroom staff will reach out.